Hello and welcome to the French Watch Collector channel. Today on the bench, we have a very special watch. We have an Omega Constellation. Actually, I was looking for the watch for, for a long time and I found this beautiful example of an Omega Constellation and you see with this very unique dial with the hexagonal shape on a the, on the dial. There is, uh, you see there actually when I'm putting the crown, the crown is not staying in position. It's, it go back like, oh, you see, went in automatically. So there is something wrong there with the with the crown when I'm pulling it. So basically, what we're gonna do on this uh, projects, like all the restoration I do on this channel, I'm going to take this uh, watch fully apart, um, see what's wrong. If there is anything wrong with the part when we disassemble it, just clean it, put it back together, re-oil everything, and uh, we should be able to get a nice watch at the end. Uh, you see the the date is changing there at midnight. We have the original crown, you see, with the logo uh, Omega logo. Uh, Omega bracelet as well, which is quite in good condition actually, the, the bracelet. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the original one, but uh, it's in good condition. And uh, now let's open the case back of this uh, constellation and you see the constellation sign there on the case back. And yes, that we found is beautiful Omega uh, caliber. You see the number there from the, from the model. So it's an automatic movement. Just checking there, you see the play. Actually, it's not too much play in a rotor, so that's quite nice. Checking if everything is working. You see it's a 561 uh, caliber, it's a 500 series caliber from Omega. Uh, I really like working on this uh, on these families, uh, 500 family from Omega. It's a very, very nice caliber and very nice to work on. So we announce a, a special giveaway in this uh, in this video, you will find a bit more detail a bit later on on, uh, on, uh, on the video on how to find uh, a vintage watch as I restore the channel. You see a bit more details uh, further on in the video. Okay, so just trying to remove the rotor there, remove the screw and this little clamp, which is keeping the rotor in place. Just using my plastic stick there just to lift it, lift the rotor quite tight. So it's, it's good. It's mean actually there is not a lot of play in the rotor, so that's a good sign. Just removing the crown there and pushing on the setting lever. There we go, the crown is out. And uh, now just removing the, the clamp, holding the mechanism in place. And uh, we should be able to take it out of the, of the case. There we go, just removing the two clamp there on, on each side. You see the gasket as well, like this uh, yellow gasket looks very old and very dry. So we'll see that a bit later on when we work on the, on the case. And now let's just see. Yeah, that's it. We have this nice dial, which is a bit damaged. It's a bit of uh, patina and uh, age to it, but actually it's not too bad. Just going to remove the hand with my Presso tool. You can find the details on the tools that I'm, some of the tools that I'm using down in the description. But if you have any questions on, uh, on the tools, don't hesitate to put some... Uh, some questions on the, on the comment section and I would be more than happy to, to answer to your question. Okay, so remove the hand and the dial and so now we can focus on the, on the mechanism. Like I said, we are going to disassemble it fully. And uh, first, I'm removing the calendar mechanism because this watch has a, a calendar. You see a calendar mechanism with the calendar disc around. So removing the plate on the top with a couple of wheels which are driving the calendar mechanism. This is a how wheel. It's a bit tight there. With a carbon tweezer tips, removing the day disc. This is a calendar driving wheel. And you see there, look at it, the uh, setting lever spring is actually broken and the part is nowhere to be found. So it means that uh, it's strange because if it's broken, like you will find the parts inside the watch, but I could not find it, so it means that probably the watch was disassembled at some point and the previous watchmaker put a broken part uh, or, 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 or leaves the broken part inside the mechanism. So obviously we'll have to find these parts and change it, but that explains why when I was putting on the, on the stem, it was coming back to the original position. It was not staying in position. So we'll see that a bit later on when we'll uh, reassemble the watch if we can find a parts and fix it. Okay, I'm just removing now the automatic system that I will uh, disassemble a bit later on. And now I'm removing the power that's stored in the mainspring, just to make sure that the mechanism doesn't have any power left. And uh, because you don't want to run the risk of damaging the parts, if there is power inside the watch and when you disassemble it, you, will, you can damage 
some parts. So that's a safe, safe thing to remove the power first. Just removing the pallet fork there. See, stuck a bit to the pallet fork bridge there. So sometimes a bit of uh, oil or grease, which is fully dry and uh, make it stick. Just getting to the uh, train of wheel bridge there. Just removing the bridge on top. And we will have access to the train of wheel underneath. Just it's a bit tight there. Just with my tweezer, gently removing the bridge. There we go. Okay, so now I have access to the wheels. Just checking each wheel, see if the pivots are not damaged or anything, anything wrong. Everything looks good. And uh, this watch you saw as a center second. So actually, this is the screw there that's holding the spring that come on, uh, on top of the center second pinion. That's the spring there. Very small. And you have the center second. That's where the center second hand is attached on this, on this pinion there, which is very long. And you want to pull it well, you want to pull it up as straight as possible because you don't want to bend it. Uh, this will ruin the amplitude of the watch. So you need to be really careful when you remove this uh, center second pinion. Okay, I remove the ratchet wheel there, which is in two parts. You see for the, and look at the amount of oil that there is there. A lot of oil. Just try to remove as much as possible with, my, with Rodico, but obviously after everything we go in a cleaning machine and it will be removed. But this watch, you will see like in, in a lot of places that a lot of oil. I don't know why, 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 if the previous watchmaker put some oil or if somebody like spray some oil like through the the crown inside the watch, I don't know, but it's like the watch is uh, submerged in oil. Just checking there, you saw I just check the, the play like with the with the barrel assembly. There is no play actually, which is good. Just removing the click now. Just the clip and the little spring underneath, see, just making sure that it doesn't fly away. You always use a plastic stick or a piece of peg wood. Crown wheel. And you see there again, like you see that this, the amount of oil that there is underneath, that's crazy. Yeah? Uh, I don't know, that's, that's way too much. You don't want to put too much oil. Yeah, You want to put some oil, obviously for, for lubrication and uh, to make sure it, it runs smoothly, but like, and it doesn't wear. But this is way too much. Yeah. This is way too much. Obviously, the parts will stick to each other. And actually, it will do the opposite. Like, it will create too much friction between the parts because it's too much uh, liquid uh, between, the, between all the parts. Okay, remove the bridge here. We have access to the center wheel and the barrel assembly that we will uh, disassemble a bit later. Again, you see the amount of oil under the barrel. Oh, that's crazy. Look at it. And the, all the bridge, like so much oil. Okay, so we move now to the die side and uh, keyless work. So that's uh, the part that I saw before that was broken. Normally there, there is a long arm on it, uh, which is acting as a spring. And you see that it's uh, broken, like, uh, like uh, yeah, it's not there anymore. So we'll have to find the parts, removing the wheel. Again, the oil on this side as well. Just removing as much as I can before putting it into the washing machine. The yoke there, the yoke spring. Just make sure that it doesn't fly away, so keep it in place. There we go. The yoke. And we still have a couple of parts there with this little arm that's acting as a spring there on the setting lever. And the setting lever. And you see the, the movement is a bit dirty, so yeah, I don't know when the last time this part was uh, serviced, but it's strange. Broken parts, a lot of oil. Uh, the watch was running, but yeah, it's it's weird. It's really weird. I don't know if somebody uh, tried to have a quick fix or if it was done by a professional, but if it was done by a professional, this is really bad, yeah. So now I'm just cleaning the, the jewels here with a piece of peg wood just to make sure I remove any uh, dried up oil. The jewels there uh, for the balance assembly. So this one is a bit of, uh, it's, a, it's a different kind of shock setting with a screw you see on top. And I'm just removing the jewel that we get clean. Putting back the balance. That's a safe place to keep it during cleaning on the, on the movement. Just placing back the screw to keep it uh, tight, to the, tight to the main plate. And the same again, this is on a, on a shock setting there. Just remove the spring and I will get the, the jewel 
just to make sure they get clean nicely uh, during the during the cleaning process. There we go. And placing back the spring, the piece of tweezer there. There we go. Perfect. And now we have all the sub assembly. So that was the part that was for the calendar mechanism, the calendar plate. Uh, just removing like this. Uh, that's a date jumper with a very sticky screw. And we have another screw that which is keeping in place the, the spring. Again, just to make sure it doesn't, oh, the part flew away, but it didn't go very far, just uh, on the bench there. There we go. The other sub assembly is uh, automatic mechanism, which is uh, obviously transmitting the power from the rotor to the barrel assembly, just to store the energy inside the main spring barrel. Okay, removing the screw there for the bridge on top. And underneath, we have a couple of wheels, a reversing wheel. So we are going to remove all these parts just to make sure, again, they get clean properly and uh, separately. Just one wheel that fell off there in one of the holes. There we go. Just removing the rest of the wheel. This is a reversing wheel. We do a special cleaning on this one, a special treatment later on. Perfect. Oh, just uh, flew away in my tweezers. And the last part there. We have the main spring uh, assembly there, the barrel assembly, just popping the lid up. And we should be able to remove it to get access to what's inside. Ah, it's a bit dirty, but it's not too bad, actually. It's an automatic si uh, system, so we'll have a bit of uh, graphite grease normally. Just removing the barrel arbor and taking out the main spring gently. You see, holding it with my finger there. Just removing a couple of turns with a tweezer. And now, with both fingers, by working left and right, I'm unwinding the, the spring. And uh, the spring will get uh, washed as well in the machine. The spring is it's in good shape. So I'm putting all the parts in these baskets, and uh, you see that's a lot of parts. And look at the oil as well from some of the parts on my uh, on my bench here. That's crazy. Yeah? So all this part we get clean, obviously, uh, to remove any dirt and like anything like, for, for example, this uh, excess of oil. Everything will be removed uh, during the cleaning, and we'll have uh, new parts or clean parts that we'll be able to reassemble on the mechanism and reroll properly this time, obviously, without the excess. Okay, so during the cleaning process, I would like to take time to uh, talk to you about my Patreon account. Obviously, this video takes me a lot of time, a lot of energy uh, to make, and a lot of uh, resource as well. Uh, so I have a Patreon account where you can go and support me uh, for, for, for my channel. So I would like to thank my existing patron, Rune, Christian, Corne, Alan, Swami, David, Ted, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. Thank you so much for supporting me. And if you want to join me, and uh, support me uh, making more content because this is a, I found a very special content that you cannot find on other platform, on TV or anything. If you want to support me, go on there on Patreon and you can find one of the subscri subscriber plan. And uh, I would be very thankful for you to join me on, uh, on, the, on this support. Okay, so now the parts are clean and dry. Just uh, feeling to spin there just to cool down a bit during the drying uh, section. And uh, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to reassemble and rewind the mainspring. So for this, I use my set of uh, version winder where I'm going to rewind. You see with this handle there, rewind the, the mainspring in a shape where it will be ready to, to be uh, put back inside the barrel assembly. So there you see it's an automatic um, mainspring. So the hand is a bit different. You will have a kind of a V-shape or Y-shaped hand. Um, this is like actually to break because if it's an automatic, obviously you keep on like an automatic watch. You you wind and you wind and you wind. And you never stop winding. Obviously when it's moving on your on your wrist, so the mainspring is sliding against the wall on the outside. But you need to keep a bit of uh, tension to make sure it doesn't slide too not slide too much to keep some uh, tension in the mainspring. But it slides a bit as well to 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 release the tension. So this is this is a uh, yes. Yeah, the difference with uh, with uh, a mainspring, which is uh, not an automatic uh, mainspring. 
Okay, just removing there with a piece of tweezer, just gently lifting up the handle there. There we go. And that's it, you see underneath, now we have the, the mainspring, which is fully winded and fully ready to be uh, put back inside the barrel. Okay, so putting some grease there, one uh, type of grease at the bottom and some graphite grease on the, on the side, again, for the mainspring to slide on the wall. And now we just press, you went down there, just press down the, the mainspring inside the barrel. And by the barrel arbor. There we go. And now I should be able to, um, to put back the lid again. We are going to, to oil it. So it's oil top and bottom. And we can close it. We are going to use this tool. So to thank you for all the support you are giving me on the channel, I will do a, a simple giveaway with this beautiful Longines that I restored on the channel. Uh, I will do the giveaway on the 26th of December, so you will describe the winner. And for this, you have three simple steps. First, you need to like the video. You need to be a subscriber, obviously, to the channel. And you need to put a comment down below why you love so much vintage watches. So thanks for participating and good luck in this giveaway. Okay, so the next step, we are going to treat uh, the parts that will be treated in Epilam. So for this, we are going to treat like the palette, the escape, and the couple of jewels of cap jewels there, which are for the balance assembly. So the epilam is a, a treatment that will help when we're going to put the oil later on, because it's parts that need to be oiled. The epilam uh, will keep the oil in place, like the, the oil will not uh, uh, move. It will, it will keep it like, the, it will give like more surface retention. So the oil will stay more at the place where we put it instead of uh, like going and going slowly like on the on the hedges. Um, so yeah, that's a treatment that you're gonna you are doing and just keep it like for a few seconds inside the inside the epilem. It's a surface treatment. So now I'm taking out the parts. We are going to dry them, and when they are fully dry, they will be ready to be to be oiled. Just cleaning the pivot point there for the escape and the palette fork. And this is where I put a drop of oil on the cap jewel there, right in the center. And like I said, the epilam will help me to keep the oil right in the middle. The oil will not move around on the on this cap jewel. There we go. And when it's done, I can put the top parts on it. So these parts are very small, obviously. You don't see it on the camera because there is a bit of uh, macro zoom on it but they are so tiny. Look at it compared to my finger there. That's it, both are, are oiled, so I can put, place them back on a balance. Put back the spring in place on this side. Just close one side. And just gently, I'm gonna put the other arm back in place, that's it. And the other side is a bit different on this watch. You see that the, there is a part first, placing back the jewel there. And uh, the spring actually is kept in place with a, with a screw. Just need to pull it over the jewel there and over the hole where we're gonna put the screw. It's a bit of a different design actually. Uh, not something that I see like uh, a lot. So yeah, it was probably changed over time. I'm not sure what, what's the reason or what's the advantages of this uh, shock setting system compared to the other one. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so now the balance is fully ready and fully oiled. We can start the reassembly. You see the movement, it's a lot cleaner actually uh, compared to when I disassemble it. You don't see any oils anymore on the surface. It's uh, fully clean, the jewels are fully clean. Um, so yeah, ready to, to be uh, assembled. Just placing there the bridge on top with all the parts, putting the screws. And uh, in uh, everything which is very important during the reassembly is that obviously all the parts need to be put back at the correct place. Uh, but after we need to oil, and that's it. You see, for example, there I'm oiling the parts, or oiling this jewel, just to make sure like the parts which are in contact with the jewels against metal to metal, everything is lubricated properly. To reduce the amplitude of the watch, make sure we have a good amplitude, so we'll have a good timekeeping, but as well to make sure that the part doesn't wear uh, too quickly. So this is very important to oil it and not to put too much like we saw during the disassembly because this is not, not bad as well. Uh, this is bad, sorry, as well. Um, so yeah, this is very important, but yeah, quite
quite tricky because you need to put enough, obviously, to be have a good lubrication, but not too much because it can be it can do the opposite if you put too much oil. Okay, so now I'm assembling this uh, crown wheel there, and you see we have this little wheel with this uh, like uh, five teeth there, six sorry, six teeth that go underneath, running around this other wheel that uh, just went underneath. So just oiling everything, like I said, all these pivot points. And now can put the screw just to make sure it stay in place. Okay, so now let's focus on the crown, on the crown wheel. Again, lubrication, these discs that go underneath. Putting some lubrication you see on this uh, kind of edges there because actually only the outside rim, like where you have the... Um, where you have the teeth, it's going to it's going to rotate, uh, and like in this groove where I just put some oil, you will have some friction. So that's why you put the you put the oil there just to make sure you reduce the friction and reduce the wear. Okay, I'm placing back now the the wheels from the train of wheel, just placing back in their pivot point there in their joules, respective joules. I do it just as uh, as good as possible, just placing them, uh, you see, like just trying to find the position, just moving them very slowly in, into their place there. And now we're gonna do the same. We're gonna put the, the bridge on top. And basically I need to make sure that each wheel is aligned into each tools. So I just put a bit of pressure on top with uh, my plastic stick there. And you see that it just dropped down. So that's mean probably it's in position. And the way to, to see it is when I'm turning the crown wheel there or the ratchet wheel, all the wheels are moving together. So it means that all the wheels are in the correct place. So if it is, I can secure everything with the screw. Make sure everything doesn't move. Perfect. Just checking there again after screwing it. Yeah, looks good. So let's move on a, on the calendar side and the keyless work. Um, so you see me there putting some blue grease there, which is a, a high friction grease. But this is some parts that we see a lot of friction. Um, putting back the winding stem. And again, on this side, like you see, like it's much cleaner than uh, what it was when uh, I disassembled it. You see no holes, no trace that it was. Putting back the setting lever, the screw there and uh, on this uh, spring that keeps the setting lever in place. And obviously remember on this, on this side, it was uh, a broken part. So yeah, on vintage, on, on vintage watches, sorry, it can be very difficult to find some, uh, some parts and can be very expensive. Uh, this is, yeah, what's... Uh, uh, but on this Omega, like the 500 series, you, you, obviously they made a lot of movement. And some people... Uh, even today, I'm making like uh, new parts uh, for for this movement, so it's not too complicated to find some parts for this uh, for this Omega movement. Obviously, on much rarer part, uh, caliber or watch, uh, it can be very tricky to find some parts. Um, so yeah, any a lot of parts you cannot make them yourself. Or today, I don't have the skills actually to make them myself. I hope one day I will have, but uh, today is something that. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I did not try yet, or um, uh, I did not. I don't. I still don't have the uh, the the tools to make the parts. But uh, maybe maybe one day I will. Okay, so that's a part actually that was broken, and you see, I found this is a new part. Uh, obviously, you see, it's not original. It's not an Omega part. But like I said, there is a lot of people that are making these uh, new parts, and uh, you see the arm that this long arm that was missing that was fully broken, which is actually a spring. You see now I'm arming it, and there we go, it's in place. Putting the oil, and you see there, when I'm putting on it, now I have the two position uh, for, for the spring, and this is what I was missing, actually. That's why it was not staying in one position. I, I lost, like the part was broken, and I, the spring was not doing this, uh, this job. So this should be fixed. We see when we put back the, the part together, the watch, sorry, together, but... Uh, uh, this should not be a problem anymore. Okay, putting the pallet fork again, putting on the jewel at the bottom and putting this bridge on top there, trying to align it as much as I can. 
very slowly because you don't want to bend, you don't want to damage this very thin pivot there on the wheels or on this pallet fork. So you don't want to put a lot of tension. And you see up there, it just drop down. So I can press it in place. There we go. And just checking the pallet is rocking. Yes, it is. So I can put the screw. And the next step there, what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of power in the watch, just winding it a bit. And we're going to see if the pallet fork is rocking left and right. Yes, it is. So the power is coming to the pallet fork. That's good. And now the moment of truth, as always, we're going to put the balance assembly and see if the watch is starting. Uh, I just put it a bit too far there. No, it doesn't go. Yeah, it, went, it goes there. And this, I'm leaving you like the full process because you will see in this, in, you need to be very patient. Is You see, I try to put it and the watch is not starting. Yeah, it's, it's not fully in place here. Yeah? I try to put it in place. Doesn't want to get a line. So again, you need to be very gentle because you don't want to damage the balance with the hairspring, with the, with the stem there. It's very sensible, so you don't want to use force. And you see the, the wheel doesn't want to start here. Yeah? want to go i'm checking see if anything is in the way or anything is touching or preventing the wheel to turn but i don't see just checking it's in play it looks good but it doesn't want to go so what i'm going to do what i do in this moment i would just take the balance out and just restart a couple of times from 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 zero just pressing it back just doing pressing the align it to the bottom jewel there Yes, oh, you see when drown he went down in a in a bottom jewel, just making rot rotating it slowly until he finds his position. Yes, just putting in place and see this time. Oh, it looks like he wants to move. He looks a bit better. Yes. Again. No, he's not in position. Yeah. That's it. Here we go. And you see actually the first time. Um the jewel, the impulse jewel was not in the right place. So that's why the, the balance didn't want to start. So just doing it again very slowly without, uh, without stressing, without doing stupid things. Um, yeah, and you see the second time around, he, he just started. Okay, so now I put uh, this uh, second pinion in center, just lubricating on the top. Before I put this spring, there's this friction spring. Actually, this spring like uh, is keeping a bit of friction in the uh, in the center second pinion, just to make sure like the the second is running smoothly, makes the run it doesn't jump like if you want like for example a quartz watch, uh, it will have a little jump obviously like mechanical watch depending on the on the frequency of your movement, uh, but yeah, not big jumps. Uh, this is why you have this uh, little spring there. We keep a bit of friction on the on the second pinion. Okay, so now the other complication on this watch is a calendar. So I'm going to reassemble the calendar mechanism, oiling all the pivot points. There we go, putting the wheel there. Now I'm going to reassemble, you remember, the parts with the jumper. So again, oiling all the pivot points, putting the jumper. We can secure it with the screw, and after it was the spring that I go and uh, keep the jumper under tension. So putting the putting the spring there. I'm just going to put the screw. I'm not going to screw it fully, but just to make sure the spring stay in place. So that's a safe way to make sure the spring doesn't jump, it doesn't go anywhere. Just arming it, just putting it into position. And now, now it's in position. I can fully screw it down. And obviously oiling all the contact point there to make sure it runs smoothly. And we can finish by putting back this uh, calendar uh, ring and the plate on top. Again, just to make sure I harm. You see, like you see the jumper on uh, there. Just to make sure. Here we go. You see, with the spring, it does its job. It will make the the date jump. That's a, that's the function of the date jumper around midnight, we just leave, we set up, uh, we need to set up the watch correctly to make sure we see a bit later on, to make sure the date uh, change happen around midnight. So you go, put the screws, 
and we will do a quick check to see if the, the date is uh, jumping. So now I'm changing the hour. And you see the disk is moving. And tac, we got a jump, so that's perfect. Okay, so now let's focus on the uh, on automatic system. So this is a reversing wheel. I treat it in uh, Lubeta, which is a, a lubricating uh, agent and cleaning agent for reversing wheel, which is specially made for this. So just uh, leave it in this solution for, for, for some time, drying it. And uh, now we're going to reassemble like this uh, automatic uh, subsystem with all the little wheels there, again, in their, in their going in their jewels. Go the last one. You see, there's one to go in the in the. Here we go. When in the jewel, and when it is, it's going to do the same on the on the top side. Line up everything, and try to put it in position. Perfect. Everything aligned. You see, in one go. So when it is, I can put the screw, and this uh, sub assembly, automatic sub assembly, should be ready to be put back on the, on the mechanism. But it will be one more step to do, obviously, like we did on the, on the train of wheel uh, and other jewels we need to oil. Again, just to make sure it runs smoothly, no wear and uh, no, not too much friction. So everything gets oiled and we can place it back on the, on the mechanism. Here we go, just pressing it down slowly. Putting the screws on each side. There is one screw holding the this uh, big bridge in place. And just turning, and you see like the wheels, everything is turning. So it means everything is connected properly. So that's good. I just tried to do a, a quick clean because you see the dial is a bit damaged. I cannot, I knew I would not be able to clean fully, but just a gentle clean on the dial, drying it just to make it to make sure it's uh, as clean as possible. A quick polish as well on the, on the hour uh, indicator. A quick polish on the hand there just to make them a bit more shiny uh, on the on the three hand. And this is uh, like the second hand, just polishing. And when it's done, you can place it back on the, on the movement, placing back the dial, just changing the date. Yeah, that's a jump. So this means that's midnight. So I can put the hour hand. Align it to midnight as best as possible. And on this dial, it's quite nice because you have this, uh, this line that goes through uh, 12 positions the 12 position and 6 o'clock. So you know when it's a midnight. Now I'm just aligning it again to midnight and just put the minute end. And normally, if everything is okay, when it's pressed in place, we're going to have a quick check. And we should have a jump of the date just around midnight. I like to have it 10 minute before 10 minutes after midnight not more so let's see oh yeah that's good it's just four minutes before midnight very happy with this so that's perfect and the last one is a second hand this one can go anywhere you just put it anywhere just press it in place with my uh, hand setting tool there we go so let's focus on the case just going to remove the crystal there, which has a tension ring around, which is actually the original because you have an Omega logo in the middle. Just removing some dirt uh, with a piece of pegwood, the case and a case back and a bracelet. Obviously, we go later on in uh, ultrasonic machine to get clean. And I need to remove this old uh, gasket there, but it's fully dry, like it's it's hard, like it's fully hard, it's uh, fully dried. And you see, like with a piece of broken oil there, I'm removing it, coming to pieces, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it was time to change it and actually it was not doing anything anymore. It was so dry that it was not uh, preventing anything from coming into, inside the watch. Just polishing the crystal there to give it a new shine on my uh, polishing machine because I want to keep it as original. It's original crystal with the Omega uh, logo. And now I just put all the parts in, the, uh, in this ultrasonic machine just to make sure I remove all the dirt. I'm using my press there to put back the crystal back on the, on the case. So you see, just put the case first. Crystal, I'm just going to use a bit of plastic there for protection to make sure I don't damage the die when I, uh, the, sorry, the crystal. 
and just pressing it in place. There we go. Now it just went right down in the case. The crystal is in position, it's polished, it's clean. The case is clean as well in the ultrasonic machine. Just removing any uh, dust or anything on the, on the dial and just placing it back on the clean case and uh, newly uh, polished crystal. Wow, that's a, such a nice movement. I, I love as well automatic movement. I love them before. Obviously, after you have the rotor that go on top, which is hiding some parts, but look how beautiful it is. I really like the, the Omega movement with this, uh, with this copper color, uh, the, the ruby coming out like this. Uh, wow, it's, it's beautiful. Just placing back the face clamp and the screw there that we keep the movement in place in the, in the case. And on this movement, I really like the design of the lug uh, on, the, on the case. It's very special, very unique. Uh, I, I love it. Yes. <laughs> Even upside down like this is, is, uh, is so nice. Placing back the rotor there with these parts. Just press it in place. There we go. This part, just make sure the rotor doesn't come out of the, from, the, from the shaft where it's on. I'm just checking when I'm rotating. Yeah. Everything is moving. I can see uh, it's widening actually the, the ratchet wheel, so that's good. New O-ring, because you remember like the, the one, the gasket was fully dry, so just put a new one, just treating in silicon there, just to make sure it's uh, sealed a bit better with uh, a silicon on it. Just placing back into the groove. There we go. And I can put back the case back, just screw, screw back the case back on the, on the watch. And uh, basically, that's it. The watch is uh, fully done, so we need to check if it's running properly. So I put it on the time grapher. You see the bit error is around 0, 0 0.1. The amplitude is quite good as well, around 290, 280. And the rate, the watch is losing one, it's around one, zero second. So that's actually, is, uh, is perfect. Uh, the timekeeping on this watch is good. I'm very, very happy with the result. And this is a finished uh, product. You see this beautiful watch, uh, which keeps this original. I don't like to, to restore too much on a dial, on a case. Really, really beautiful, like a historical, historical piece, like it's Omega Constellation. So hope you like this restoration and I see you for my next project. Bye-bye.